Have you ever seen a unicorn? Well, one exists here in this aquarium, and a king has asked for your help to find him. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel, Aquatic Fantasy Edition. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Today's special fantasy-themed episode is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, a free-to-play dark fantasy RPG for mobile and PC, taking place in a land called Teleria. Kinda sounds like one of our ant kingdoms, right? Here is the tavern where you can upgrade your champions. After summoning new champions in the portal area, you can drag them over to the tavern and either level them up or sacrifice in order to power up your favorite champions, like I did with this one. Now he's ready to win. You can also compete in the ongoing tournaments or new area tournament in order to win awesome rewards. Via my links as a new player, you get an exclusive welcome pack to help you advance like 100k silver and a free epic champion Jotun. They can be found in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Please check out the game and support my channel by downloading RSL using my links below. And now, on to the episode. Word has it that a unicorn has been spotted roaming these lands and the ever-powerful king of this great kingdom has called upon you to find it, as it has the power to cure the deathly illness that has befallen his queen. Many have tried to find the unicorn, but it hides from sight with great skill, and it takes a good eye to spot him. This is where all of you come in. Spot the elusive unicorn somewhere in these lands, and in return, the king will give you a special gift. You'll know you've spotted the quote-unquote unicorn, by its long spiral horn. So keep your eyes peeled for that spiral horn as we enter the Meadow of the Dwarves. The Meadow of the Dwarves is a fantastic world, bustling with life, color, and myth. It's my freshwater planted community aquarium fully stocked with 25 species of plants and nine species of fish and aquatic creatures, whom you will all get to meet shortly, including the unicorn, which of course your eyes might prove sharp enough to spot somewhere in this video. Now they say in aquascaping, your aquarium should tell a story. And so as a D&D and folklore fan, I took that quite literally when designing these lands. The inspiration for the Meadow of the Dwarves here came to me when looking at dwarf folklore of several cultures. I had found hills and meadows to be commonly chosen habitats for dwarves and halflings. Look at Frodo, for instance, and the Shire, rolling hills of green. That's where I drew inspiration for these territories, which are filled with hills and dips that make for some very interesting landscape. Now guys, take a look at these inconspicuous, rounded black lava rocks here. You'll notice them scattered all around the territories. These are where the dwarves live. Within each rock lives a separate dwarf family. You can even see some of them have entrances to welcome you in. There are eight family of dwarves living in these territories, and ruling them all is the Dwarf King, who resides here in this grand tree stump tower. The Dwarf King and his queen live in the most beautiful palace, adorned with great mosses and ferns, plants of purple, pink, and magenta. But as mentioned, the queen has fallen gravely ill, and we need to locate that unicorn to save her. So let's move on and keep looking. But now that I've introduced you to the invisible slash imaginary inhabitants of the lands, let me now show you the visible inhabitants of the Meadow of the Dwarves. First, we have two great angels, Michael and Gabriel, my angelfish, who float gracefully above and around the meadows, protecting the lands from evil spirits. Their names are of biblical origin. Two majestic angels. Aren't they pretty? Soaring across the skies are my beautiful neon dwarf rainbow fish, which change color depending on lighting. I see them as the moving rainbow that arches across the sky, a well-known symbol in leprechaun folklore, so they fit right into the theme. I'm sure if we follow these dwarf rainbow fish, they will lead us to a pot of gold somewhere. And look, here come the meadow's resident herd of deer grazing on the greenery as they pass through the meadow. These deer, aka Siamese algae eaters, feed on algae that grows around the lands. They're super shy though, so I always have to creep up to the glass slowly when approaching, if I expect to see them. If they dart away, I just sit completely still, and they once again emerge to graze.
Giggling and playing gregariously through the meadow are the sprites of the land. These are the ever playful and cute school of celestial pearl daniels. Like colorful and rambunctious fairies, they dart all around the territories, chasing each other around in a never-ending game of tag and hide-and-seek. They particularly love hanging out in and around the king's tower and peek through the back door. And oh, look here! The gorgeous and lusciously flowing fins of the mermaids. These are my long-finned albino bristlenose plecos, and though odd-looking with their skin-colored exterior and long fins, they're quite mermaid-like in appearance and alluring to look at. They clean algae from the rocks and the wood. A clouder of cats, autosynclus catfish that is, relax together in the meadow, often riding the refreshing winds that blow through the hills. If you look closely, you'll also find ancient spirits who are mostly invisible to the inhabitants of the meadow. My Australian Amano Shrimp, who sit discreetly in the confidence of anonymity all around the lands, watching and eating up bits of organic debris unnoticed. The only obvious evidence of their presence in the meadow are the random exoskeletons they shed and leave behind. Now where is that unicorn? Did you guys see him yet? Well, let's keep on moving. As mentioned, there's a plethora of beautiful plants in this aquarium. Most notably the Monte Carlo carpet, which look like mini clovers. The dwarf hair grass, which give the meadow that grassy feel. And the hydrocotyle tripartita, which look like shamrocks. There are also several species of mosses growing here, including Christmas moss, which covers the lava rocks of the dwarf families, java moss, which adorns the dwarf king's tower, phoenix moss, which cover the main rocks, and coral moss, which I'm starting to grow around the territories. I love the random pops of red and pink from my Ludwigia, Alternanthera, Rotala, and the massive red Amazon swords. I also truly love the fluff of the Kabomba, which resemble towering trees, and the Hygrophila, which look like epiphytic ferns from a forest. There are plants here with gorgeous iridescent leaves, like my Bucephalandra, which look like they've been sprinkled with fairy dust, and frosted leaves like these Pantanal. Now check this out, guys! The secret to maintaining and growing such a community nature aquarium is the epic gear I've outfitted to run such a biological aquatic sanctuary. I use not one, but two external filters, to keep the waters clean and flowing, a surface skimmer keeps the surface crystal clear of water surface debris and biofilm, so gas exchange is good. An air stone runs 24 hours to ensure the fish receive enough oxygen. And here you'll see CO2 gas, which is being injected into the water to support the plant growth. Now check this cool thing out, guys. The microbubbles of CO2 are taken in by the plants and under the lights, which are on for eight hours a day, the plants undergo accelerated photosynthesis, procuring these shiny microbubbles of gaseous oxygen that float to the surface as the plants respire. A super satisfying process aquascapers call purling. I love watching when the water is most saturated with oxygen and the purling is at its peak, creating the most beautiful and relaxing bubbles, which kind of resemble gentle snowflakes falling in reverse. It's hypnotic and entrancing, wouldn't you say? I also use a variety of different liquid fertilizers added daily in varying amounts and instruments to ensure optimal water parameters. All right, and that concludes our tour of the Meadow of the Dwarves. But the question is, did you find the unicorn? What even is the unicorn, you ask? Well, it did appear in the video already. So if you still want to take a stab at spotting it before I reveal the answer, go back to the start of the video and give the meadow a second look through. Otherwise, this is where it was. Not sure if you managed to spot it, but the unicorn appeared in two places in this video. When looking at the mermaids, and while looking at the back door of the tower. The unicorn is an elephant snail and is so good at hiding. I only spot him a few times a month as he spends most of his time buried in the ground sleeping only wandering the lands at night or random times in the morning when he's searching for a place to sleep. So did you manage to spot him? If you did, good for you. But if you didn't, don't worry. This game wasn't easy. 
And there are days even I question if he's still alive and in the tank because he'd been MIA for so long. Anyway guys, I urge all of you to keep this game fun. Help me troll any cheaters cleverly trying to go through the comments in search of where and what the unicorn is. Be creative and leave a comment about how you spotted the tusked seahorse, horned octopus, spiked shark, or whatever aquatic animal you can think of, along with a random timestamp to confuse them. I'll be sure to heart my favorites. <laughs> Thanks guys for being good sports. This was fun. All the dwarves of the land rejoiced with the news that we had found the unicorn and had saved their beloved queen, whose health had been fully restored. As promised, as a token of their utmost appreciation, the royal king of the dwarves has sent you a gift, a living crown, a Clethon Corona snail, to wear as official dukes and duchesses of the meadow of the dwarves, which he proclaims as now your home to escape to any time you like. What an honor. Coming to this mythical watery garden full of beautiful creatures, plants, and fantasy today, along with all of you guys, has been satisfying beyond words. They say aquariums offer a healthy avenue of escapism, relieving the mind of stress, anxiety, depression, and even helping with lowering blood pressure. I find renewed clarity after staring at this aquarium for extended periods of time, in very much the same way as when I'm ant watching. I also love that it stimulated our imagination. I hope this episode was enjoyable and relaxing for you as well. Let's come back to the meadow sometime again in the future, shall we? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next week. It's Ant and Fish Love forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? It's a nice break from the ants for a bit, but we're back with the ants next week and more nature discovery ahead. So if you haven't yet, do smash that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload because I think notifications are broken again. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you, AC Inner Colony. I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch extended play scenes of the tank and its inhabitants. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA. So you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit AntsCanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what it's not made of? Congratulations to Eric Morales, who answered, Snot is composed of water, epithelial cells, dead leukocytes, mucin, and inorganic salts. Congratulations, Eric. You just won a free ultimate and keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what was your favorite creature in the meadow of the dwarves and why? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.